Are you low on form, struggling to score goals, struggling to keep a clean sheet, haven't actually won in, I don't know, five, six games? Play Chelsea. Alright, what's happening everyone? <laughs> Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, host. Yeah, I know you lot are doing well, but the truth is, if you are, like me, a Chelsea fan, you are probably quite frustrated. Now, this match review is going to be a little bit different from normal. I did take meticulous notes throughout this game. I talked about how players set up, personnel, the shape of Chelsea, how it actually changed twice, Mason Mount moving from left centre mid to a number 10, to a left wing, Frank Lampard playing a 4-3-3, a 4-2-3-1, and a 4-4-2 diamond of two strikers. Short synopsis for you there. And I talked about little moments throughout, but you know what man, I'm gonna scrap all my notes I'm just going to talk to you guys, and I'm not even going to bring you up the stats. For me, it's pointless. I'm going to talk about who, why this game was won and why it was lost. I'm not going to pull up the analysis screen. I'm not going to give any stats. I'm just going to talk to you about this game, what it means for Chelsea. Remember, Chelsea go away to Tottenham next. And I, don't even have, I haven't even looked, but maybe they can drop out the top four to Jose Mourinho. I, 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 Bournemouth are winless in five games. They have a horrendous amount of injuries. Like, loads of starters from their starting 11 are injured. Chelsea keep coming up against these teams that are in crisis for one reason or another, and we rehabilitate their season. <laughs> I know there's something to be said about the West Hams, the Evertons, the Bournemouths, that they when they've lost so many in a row, they're due a win. I get that, and there is actually some truth to that, but this really, really is pretty unforgivable from Chelsea. I do not want to take anything away from Bournemouth, Eddie Howe is a good coach. He's been struggling of late. He set them up very, very well, and they were good on the break. Really, it's Chelsea's fault. They make all their own problems, they don't finish off their chances, and I kind of am starting to be a bit inclined to bring Frank Lampard's tactics into question. Not because he did try and change it quite a lot in that game, and that's what I want to see from a coach, uh, a sort of active coach, a, a coach that's pragmatic in terms of changing, not too wedded to an idealistic way of playing. But really, like, surely something radical's got to happen. I don't know, maybe I'm being too reactionary because the game's just finished. He did go to a 4-4-2 diamond, like, he... Yeah. I get it, he played all his cards on the table. So is it something to do with coaching, with training, where they're not doing something right? Now listen, since Bournemouth got promoted, they've won twice at Stamford Bridge. Now three times. Only Liverpool's won one more since they've been promoted. Who knows, maybe they're tied now. And it's so frustrating because I don't want to like disrespect Bournemouth because they're a good side or whatever. They are, they're a good side. They're, they're, but they're just like... A minnow bogey team for Chelsea now. Alright, so what went wrong? Chelsea started, like I said, 4-3-3, went to 4-2-3-1. They conceded the goal, but I'm not going to slate the defence. Chelsea were vulnerable systemically today on the counter-attack. Bournemouth missed a sitter. Now, I mean a sitter. I think Josh King was 1-1 one -one with Kepa at least twice, maybe three times. The one time he isn't selfish and squares it for an absolute certain goal, they screw it up. They scuff it. It's a sitter. Chelsea actually get away with it a few times, but the truth is, it's not the defence's fault. Certainly the centre-back's fault in this instance. The goal that they go on to score to give them the points is actually a good goal. It's Dan Gosling, he, he gets the ball over his shoulder and scores, and it looked offside, the VAR checked, it wasn't offside. I mean, fair play, it was a good goal, but... Chelsea were, it's almost like they were so desperate throughout the whole game, like panicking, do you know what I mean? Like, just trying to, have so much pressure to beat this team that have been really, really bad of late and are riddled with injuries, that their sort of, the mentality failed them again, and therefore when they were vulnerable on the break, they were just massively vulnerable on the break. Look man, you could, uh, I don't think Emerson had a good game, I don't think he's been very good lately. As Biliquet has been pretty good, like defensively maybe, but you know what, I don't want to cut off either centre-back in Rudiger and Zuma. They started well in terms of distribution, but they maintained good one-on-one -on -one defending. They were better in set-piece defending, even like, or certainly the first phase of set-piece defending. Afterwards, when the team gets involved, the collective frail psychology of Chelsea gets involved, then they look even more weak. But both Kurt Zuma and Antonio Rudiger did make loads of good challenges in this game, like last ditch tackles as well, like really well-timed tackles, 
in our Chelsea's own penalty area. So, to be fair, the defenders, they did well. Kepa, man, I don't know, like, the goal he conceded was a bit of a weird one, so I kind of get that. But did he look comfortable and certain? No, but most of the team didn't. Chelsea, for any game they play this season, even when they play badly, like at West Ham or whatever, Everton today against Bournemouth, they have spells where you go, oh, that's really nice, great quality, superb. Oh, they're putting loads of balls across the face of goal. No one's in that. Oh, oh that was a lovely one-touch combination. Mason Mount and Tammy did it a few times. Didn't come off. I don't want to cut off Tammy Abraham because to be honest, man, throughout the 90, as a conventional centre forward like he is, he was starved of proper service, like real decent service. And Willian, he kind of did what he usually did. A lot, a lot went for him. He retained possession well. He sort of did actually a few good moves on the right wing to put balls in, weren't converted. For me, probably out of the front three, Pulisic was the most disappointing because we know what he can do. And he just he didn't really do anything in this game, to be honest. Mount in the first half looked the most threatening player on the sort of middle third, final third for Chelsea in terms of playing between the lines and trying to do something. But really, a lot of possession, a lot of nearly balls, no end product. And then Bournemouth, who are playing for their lives, understandably considering their run of form, they catch Chelsea on the break. Chelsea look vulnerable. They have to get, you know, bailed out by the Rudiger or Zuma on counter-attacks. And really, Bournemouth probably should have scored from one of their counter-attacks. The goal they score is actually for an attacking phase of play. I think maybe after a set piece, when Gosling gets his uh, foot on that ball and it goes in, it wasn't on the counter-attack, which looked like their best route of scoring. Actually, that's not entirely fair. They were dangerous on set pieces as well. I think they've scored five set piece goals this season or something. So Chelsea, to be fair to Chelsea's defence, again, better at defending straight up set pieces. But as soon as it gets to the second and third ball and it becomes open play, again, that collective Chelsea frail mentality comes into play. So let's talk about that, right? It really is. Chelsea have good players. Like This is what I'm worried about. Do they need a character to come in? But Jorginho is a strong character. Kovacic is well, he's a good player. I'm not sure how much of a strong character he is. Definitely Rudiger coming back in is important. Did Chelsea have too many youngsters in the front line? I trust Tammy Abraham to score in big games. You know, he's done it in the Champions League twice. But really, I know it's, it's that cliche thing of, oh, Chelsea are lacking in Eden Hazard. But one goal in that game in the first 70 minutes changes the whole complexion of the game. The young Chelsea side can calm down, they can chill out, and really they can go on, maybe score another. But no. Fair play to Bournemouth, the Cherries, to Eddie Howe. He set up well, he was so hamstrung by injuries. And they frustrated Chelsea in the first half, and really, they deserved the, deserved the win. Do you know what I mean? Even if they were on the back foot for a lot of the time, that's how they had to play, that's how they played, that was their game plan. They scored the goal. I don't think Chelsea were too passive because they were conceding fouls. It wasn't like, you know, was it West Ham when they didn't concede one foul? I can't remember. But they were getting stuck in. They were trying to win every 50-50. That's not my critique with Chelsea for this game. It's just a sense of panic, a sense of it's good to have urgency. They came out in the second half after probably a bit of a whipping from Frank Lampard at half time with a sense of urgency. You want a sense of urgency, but you can't have a collective sense of panic because a collective sense of panic, especially in a young team, results in no goals, results in no final third chance combination, big chances being created is what I'm trying to say. And that's the problem Frank Lampard faces. Is it complacency against these smaller teams? I'm not sure, but Chelsea will be tested now. Sure, they got through to the knockout stages of the Champions League in a game against Lille where they made it incredibly difficult for themselves and they, they didn't need to. No one is doubting the quality of Frank Lampard's Chelsea. No one is doubting the ethos and general philosophy of how he wants to play. But something within the club, in-house, very much needs to be sorted out and as quickly as possible. Sure, Chelsea can look to make a signing, whether it be an attacking signing or a left-back. To be honest, more and more and more, if, if there was a sort of glaring hole, 
Emerson hasn't impressed. He started this season so well. I've been a huge sort of advocate of playing Emerson, but we could have done with a much better left back in that game and the lower games recently. And to be honest, in hindsight, maybe Reese James at right back and Espy at left back, if you could replay the game, would be the way to go. It's not a criticism of Frank's lineup, it's just one of those hindsight things. But anyway, I digress. What I'm saying is, it's not necessarily like, oh, we got a buy in January. No, 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 no. Well, yeah, maybe, but this, this problem isn't about that. As you can see, Chelsea had two very capable centre-backs playing in this game. Chelsea had a good midfield in this game. You know, a lot of good, talented midfielders saw the pitch today, and Chelsea have talented forwards. The winged position in this game saw Mason Mount, Callum hudson Adoy. Willian and Pulisic all play in this game. Batshuayi can finish whatever your opinions are on him. Tammy Abraham's a very good centre forward. It's not the problem as personnel in this game. You beat Bournemouth at home because of better team play, a better collective psychology, allow your chemistry to work and don't panic. And really, something needs to be sorted out in how It's a switch. A switch needs to go in your head. And I don't know how Frank Lampard's going to do that, but really this is going to be the biggest test of his managerial career so far. It's up or down from here for Chelsea. They go away to Spurs and beat Jose Mourinho's Tottenham, everything is forgotten. But if they go and get humbled by the ex-Chelsea experienced gaffer with a very good side away, how are Chelsea going to react? Certainly top four is not shooing anymore, so really people are going to have to sort of readjust their expectations back to maybe how they viewed this team pre-season. Anyway, that's it. I've vented, I've talked about the game. If you want to cheer yourself up <laughs> after a depressing Chelsea match, please do go check out Yam Plays. Link in the top of the description. It's where I play FIFA 20 Chelsea career mode in the happy times with Kai Havertz and Jaden Sancho and loads of other signings that I've made. Or I've just got Call of Duty Modern Warfare and I'm playing that and I've started a new series there. It's a lot more fun. It's me being happy and laughing and joking do click the link in the top of the description and subscribe. Right, I'm done, guys. You lot enjoy the football. Uh, I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life, seen trouble. Hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle. Bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper. Sorry, I don't. I let me, bitch.